Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 14th of July 2023. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see some brief introduction regarding the topics. So first topic it is about constitutional sins. So actually it is talking about interfaith marriages and actually recently uh, Allahabad High Court gave a judgment regarding this interfaith marriages that is regarding conversion from one religion to another religion in sake of marriage. So if you see I think you have come across this concept called as love jihad. That means uh, whenever the two persons they are in love uh, and uh, if they are belonging to the different religions so now you are seeing there is religious conversions right so this concept is called as love jihad actually this topic is important from your polity which comes in a gs paper too and there is also high chance of getting question in your interview also regarding this love jihad and next topic is about work in progress so this article which is talking about 50th gst council meet so as you all know that, so there are key changes that came up in this 15th GST council meet. So we are going to see that, that will be important from your economy, which comes to the GST paper today. And from prelims point of view, you have to know about some facts regarding GST council. And next topic, it is about reflective pause. So this topic, it is about NATO. So NATO is nothing but North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So during Cold War time, at that time, two power blocks were formed. So first one is USA, second one is USSR. So at that time, US came up with this NATO. And to counter this NATO, Russia came up with WhatsApp Act. So here you have to know about some facts regarding this NATO. And this NATO, which is seen in news from February onwards, not this February, that is last February, uh, when Russia started attacking Ukraine. And next topic it is about GSI survey of Siachen. So this article is also very important. So as you all know that Himalayas are very important, right? Especially for Indian subcontinent in Himalayas plays an important role. But what happened due to this climate change, due to uh, global warming, so melting of these glaciers is seen. And this melting of glaciers is one of the important issue that we are facing and because of increasing of melting of glaciers so we can see a lot of ecological impact a lot of economical impact right so this article is important from geography point of view and even we can relate this topic with environment and ecology as well and next topic is about india france india france ties gray gate for next 25 years says modi so this article which is talking about india france relations and actually you know that our priyam he is going to visit actually he visited france and here this article it is talking about how we can improve defense ties with france so this article is important from international relations and you have to see a map of france and next topic it is about national research foundation so in yesterday's article we discussed about what is this national research foundation so actually one important uh, cause of concern regarding establishment of this national research foundation is funding so if you're talking about this funding uh, regarding education so here if you're comparing with the gdp it is very less and if you're comparing with other countries also india's spending in this education is very low and recent national education policy 2020 which talks about establishment of national research foundation and one important issue here is funding so here this article says that we can get funds from corporate social responsibility so this article is important from your garden's point of view so students today your homework is you have to check france map and second one is you have to also refer about you need to refer about this corporate social responsibility and let me know in the comment box so what exactly is this and now let us try to see the detailed analysis of the topic so first one is the an un un unacceptable verdict in constitutional sense so here it is talking about unacceptable verdict so actually this article which is focusing on recent Allahabad high court judgment so recent Allahabad High Court judgment regarding personal choices. 
So first of all, let us try to see what happened. So what is the context? So recently, a one case, this case, it is related to interfaith marriages. So in this interfaith marriage case, Allahabad High Court said that I won't interfere in the personal choice of individuals. So this order comes regarding anti-conversion laws in UP and other states. So recently UP came up with anti-conversion law and not only UP and even other states are also coming up with anti-conversion laws. So because of this Allahabad High Court said that no, no, we are not going to interfere in the personal choices of individuals. And not only this, various state governments, they are undertaking the projects to outlaw. And they describe this interfaith marriages as Lao Jihad. So if you're going into the deep, into these details of this case, Allahabad High Court stuck down its previous judgment. So in this judgment, it said that religious conversion, when we are going, were changing from one religion to another religion just for the purpose of marriage. So only just for the purpose of marriage. So whenever one person who is changing the religion, it was unacceptable. So this is the thing which said by Allahabad High Court in the previous judgment. And the court said that essentially it does not matter whether a conversion is valid or not. So the right of two adults to live together, they cannot be encroached upon by the state or others. So now here, Arhabad High Court bench, here the justice with Justice Pankaj Navi and next one is Justice Vivek Agarwal. So they were hearing the petitions. So they were hearing the petitions of a Muslim man and his wife and actually this Muslim man and his wife, they converted from Hinduism to Islam. So they converted from Hinduism to Islam and to squash a police complaint against them by a woman's father. So woman's father, he complained. He gave a complaint to the police regarding this interfaith marriage. So here the decision may now pose a legal problem to Uttar Pradesh government because Uttar Pradesh government came up with a law to regulate this interfaith marriages or regarding anti-conversion an anti-conversation that is from one religion to another religion. So we are talking about the highlights of this Supreme Court judgment or the order. So it gave up uh, judgment regarding the different scenarios like the first one is it addressed about the right to life and liberty. So if you are talking about these religious conversions even when made solely for the marriage constituted a valid exercise of personal liberties. So whenever we are talking about marriage, so here man or woman, they have the right to select their uh, life partner, right? So the right to live with a person, with a person of his uh, or her choice, irrespective of religion, it is intrinsic in the part and that means it will come in the part of right to life and liberty. So it is a right of an individual and when this right is infringed, then that means it would constitute a breach of his or her fundamental right to life and personal liberty. So, and even it will come under Article 21 of our Indian Constitution. So, this is the thing which said by said by Allahabad High Court. And next one is High Court also said about the constitutional duty of the court. So, the courts and the constitutional courts in particular, they were enjoyed to uphold the life and liberty of an individual and this right to life and liberty which is given or which is enshrined which is guaranteed under article 21 of our indian constitution and the next one is freedom of choice so interference in a personal relationship would constitute a serious encroachment into right to freedom of choice of two individuals and if we're talking about human right as well an individual on attaining adulthood that means who cost age of 18 years so they have a statutorily conferred right that is to choose their life partner. So if this right is denied means it would affect their human right. So the dignity of an individual is also very important, right? And if you're talking about next one that is right to privacy. So in one famous case that is case for the Swami case, Supreme Court said that right to privacy which is which is the intrinsic part of Article 21 of our Indian Constitution, right? So here, 
here choosing of life partner it is also comes under this right to privacy and here court also make a note on this non interference of state so if you're talking about marriage as an institution high court said that it is a matter of choice and every adult woman has a fundamental right to choose his or her or her own partner so even if such a decision encourages other concomitant decision including the choice of religion the state they have little to do with it so if if the state won't interfere also so they have a very little to interfere in this so this is the thing which said by court so if we are talking about what are the laws and what are the court judgments regarding this interfaith marriages so if you are talking about ipc in indian penal code section 366 which talks about criminalization of abduction so whenever any woman is and is abducted means it comes under criminal case under ipc section 366 and if you are talking about this famous case that is case putaswami case of 2017 a nine judge bench of supreme court declared that it comes under right to privacy is an intrinsic part of right to life and personal liberty which comes under article 21 and next one is noor jahan begum case in 2014 judgment of allahabad high court which ruled that conversion just for marriage is unacceptable and one more case is rave stanilus versus madhya pradesh supreme court held that right to propagate does not comes under the part of right to convert so this is about this topic and i hope it is very much clear and now let us see the next topic it is about 50th gst council meet so this article is very important from your economy point of view and here from prudence point of view you have to know some facts regarding gst council whether it is a constitutional body or not so which constitutional amendment act we came up so and even you can see the members of this gst council so why this is a news so recently 50th gst council meet held so which is held under uh, the chairmanship of our union finance minister so here you can see this uh, infographic so that you can understand so which are the things which were discussed in this 50th council meet so they talked about my distance they talked about launches satellite launches and even they talked about changing of gst slabs as well so if you see the highlights the first and the foremost thing here is you have to think about this online gaming so gst on this online gaming for the first time the clarity given by this gst council made and now this gst council has approved for the for the imposition of a uniform 28 percentage of tax on full face value of bets for example if it is involving online gaming casinos horse racing etc and this this is uh, this is now taxed about 28 percentage under this gst and as per this current online gaming platforms they pay just 18 percentage of the commission collected on the each game but now it increases to 28 slab 28 percent slab so if you talk about tax on food and beverages in cinema halls the gst on restaurants inside the Cineplex they will attract five percent GST against eighteen percentage earlier. So earlier that is eighteen percentage now we decrease to five percentage. So you can go to movies, okay? So currently movie tickets below rupees hundreds were taxed at twelve percentage, while these above they they attracted eighteen percentage GST now. So if you are talking about the G exempted GST on cancer drugs, so cancer drugs are very costly actually. and we can get mostly branded drugs on this uh, cancer drug but not generic drugs so now gst council decided to exempt this uh, gst on the import of cancer drug the one important cancer drug here is dinucleotide dinucleotide so it is used for the treatment of uh, rare diseases and even the drugs which are used for the treatment of rare diseases they are also exempted from this uh, gst okay so next here they also talked about tribunals so the council has recommended setting up of mechanism for appellate tribunals and demands for the state wise benches they were presented by the various states 
and the council approved setting up of as many as 40 benches in phases across our country. So this is the one important thing that decided by this 50th GST council meet. So these are some important key highlights of this uh, meet. And next topic it is about reflective pause. So it is, uh, it is talking about NATO. So NATO must change the very paradigm that set the Ukraine conflict in motion. So actually if you are talking about the members of this NATO, they met recently in Lithuania and they want to take, uh, they want to take stock of their military and as well as financial support to Ukraine okay, in the face of uh, Russian aggression. So actually what happened here, NATO countries you are supporting this Ukraine and many countries you are providing military support, some countries you are providing defense support, some countries you are providing financial support. And now recently this uh, NATO members, they came together and they have meeting in this Lithuania and finally they, said, they decided that they have to take off the support which is given to this Ukraine. So now let us try to see this topic in detail and we are going to focus on NATO most. So here actually Sweden and Finland, they also applied for the NATO membership in the last year. And now the Sweden uh, NATO accession has been held up by the members, they like Turkey. So if we are talking about NATO, it is nothing but North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So here this NATO it is also called as the North Atlantic Alliance and this North Atlantic Alliance it is an intergovernmental military alliance okay and actually it is like um, organization between the 31 member states. So out of this 29 were European and 2 were North American countries you are part of this and they are the founding members actually. And actually this uh, NATO was established aftermath of uh, World War II. So World War II ended in year 1945. So after that here they came up with establishment of this uh, organization called as NATO. And it was came up into existence in year 1949. So what is the aim? The aim here it is to promote or to protect uh, security and freedom of all the countries that are the members of this NATO. So if you see this map, which is which you can see on the screen, so it is it will be very clear that so which are the countries which are the founding members and which are the countries which join later and which are the countries which are applying to join. So if we're talking about operations of this NATO, NATO it is an active and leading contributor to peace and security on international stage, and even this NATO which promotes democratic values and it is committed to the peaceful resolution of the disputes and if you see here this NATO which is also having military capacity which is going to provide to undertake crisis management operations etc. So if you are talking about membership how a country can get the membership of this NATO. So here to get the membership it have to it have to satisfy article 10 of this NATO that is not Atlant North Atlantic Treaty and this article 10 which talks about how a country can join this alliance and this article 10 which states that membership is open to only to any okay not only to European state but to any countries okay and any decision to invite a country to join this alliance so it is taken by North Atlantic or Council so there is a provision called as Council and this Council will be deciding whether to invite a country to join this NATO or not, to provide this membership or not. So if you want to get the membership here, all the countries they have to accept. Okay, so this is about this NATO. And I found one image interesting in OPED page, opinion page. So this is the image of River Bias. So because of heavy rainfall in this northern part of our country, so especially northern part rivers like uh, Indus river system or you can talk about Ganga river system and especially river Emna which is overflowing and here you can see this image this is showing about the overflowing of this river Bias. So here if you see where exactly this river Bias is located and this is the map of the uh, map of today okay. So here we have this river Bias. Okay so this is the river Bias course. So here I want to give you one homework. So please go and refer in this river system like which are the tributaries and where they originated, where they are meeting because a lot of times 
number of time is a question regarding this in this uh, reverse system which appear in your UPSC prelims and this topic is important from your prelims point of view. So the river Bias which originates re near this Rohatang Pass and at a height of 4000 meters that is around 4 kilometers above sea level on the southern end of Pir Panjal range. So it is the close to the source of river Ravi. So where this uh, river Bias originates in this Rohatang Pass and actually it crosses this Dola Dhar range and it takes a southwestern direction and finally it will meet river Sutlaj. So where this river Bias meets the Sutlaj that is at Harike in Punjab and this is very important. And it is a comparatively a very small river and it is around 460 kilometers long but one important fact here is so this river Bias which is located or which is lies entirely within our Indian territory. And here in this context you have to see even in this river treaty between India and Pakistan. So which are the three, which are the rivers uh, uh, which are belonging to India and which are belonging to Pakistan according to this Indus River Treaty. So this is your homework and please let me know in the comment box as well. And next topic it is about the first GSI survey of the Siachin. So this article which is talking about the geological survey of India. So first geological survey of India survey of the Siachin glaciers. So this article is very important and you have to see the history when this had been started. So if you see context it says that in June 1958 exactly 65 years ago. So a top Indian geologist the name was like Raina. So who, who at that time was an assistant geologist at GSI. He led the first geological survey of India survey of this Yachin glacier. So when was this uh, survey started in 1958. So here Raina have known that uh, peaceful environs he surveyed in 1958 would become a bone of contention between India and Pakistan in future because at that time India started this operation Meghdoot okay so operation Meghdoot which launched by Indian Air Force in 1984. So if you are talking about some important details which are highlighted in this article it says that if during this period Pakistan did entertain any idea of this region which is falling on its side of cease fire line so we can't go for this uh, doing of this survey so this is the idea behind this geologist and there was no such protest and there is no contemporary document to affect uh, effect from the Pakistan so we did not get anything uh, negative from the Pakistan and actually here it is only 25 years later that Pakistan for the first time formally started its claim to this region okay and finally it extended its claims near this line of control from nine from nj 984 to till this karakoram pass so this is the code which is used there so if we're talking about divisions of himalayas it is very important from west to east so from this area also you got question in your prelims so we have punjab himalayas common himalayas nepal himalayas and assam himalayas so between river Indus and river Satlaj, we have this Punjab Himalayas and this rivers are very important. Between river Indus and Satlaj, we have this Punjab Himalayas. So between Satlaj and river Kali, we have this Koman Himalayas. And from this river Kali to river Tista, we have this Nepal Himalayas. And between this river Tista and the river Brahmaputra, we have this Assam Himalayas. So we have the four divisions of Himalayas from west to east. That is Punjab Himalayas, Komun Himalayas, Nepal Himalayas and Assam Himalayas. And you have to remember, the, uh, remember this river that is river Indus, river Satlaj, river Kali and river Tista, river Brahmaputra. And now let's try to see next topic it is about India France ties gate for next 25 years says our Prime Minister. So our Prime Minister he is on visit to France. And we are expecting that it will be helpful for improving of defense relations, defense cooperation between India and France. So if you see context, India-France relation is now gate. That means we are going to boost India-France relations in the next 25 years. So if you see details, our Prime Minister, he attended this French National Day or Bastille Day celebrations in Paris as a guest of honor. And an Indian tri-services contingent 
a contingent will be the part of this Bastille Day parade. And our Prime Minister, he is also expected to sign a deal of acquisition of 26 Rafale marine fighters for INS Vikrant aircraft carrier. So, we are going to have 26 Rafales. So, additionally, a repeat order for construction of three more Scorpion class submarines that is belonging to Calvary class submarines at Megazone Docks Limited. So, it mainly comes under Make in India initiative. So, we are talking about different defense cooperation between India and France. So, during this uh, visit of uh, France president to India, so now the two countries, so actually during the president uh, visit, that is France president visit to India. So, at that time two countries, that from the both sides, that is from Indian side and France side, they decided to create an annual defense dialogue. And actually we are having three regular defense exercises, that is exercise Varuna, that is Navy exercises and exercise Garuda, it is Air Force exercise and exercise Shakti, it is Army exercise. And as for the CIPRI, that is Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, that is between 2018 to 2022, so France was India's second largest arms supplier. And we are getting about 29% of our arms from this France. And this CIPRI report also observed that here French defense exports to India, which, which are including like aircrafts, which we are importing like submarines, which had been increased. And in 2016, the government, they signed agreement for purchase of 36 Rafales. And we're also having a contract of getting six Scorpion submarines from France. And this agreement signed in 2006. And all six vessels are built under technology transfer at Megazone Docks Limited project. Okay, and they belongs to this uh, Calvary class. So this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic. It is about National Research Foundation. So title says proposed National Research Foundation looks to tap CSA that is the corporate social responsibility to address funding concerns. So this article is very important here we have to focus on what this is exactly National Research Foundation is. And this today's lecture we discussed about this National Research Foundation and now we are going to see what about the funding for the establishment and for the maintenance of this National Research Foundation. So if we are talking about context it says that the proposed National Research Foundation where it is proposed, proposed in this National Education Policy of 2020. So here it needs about 50,000 crore over the next five years. And actually we are expecting that we will be getting about 36,000 crore that is going to be coming from private sector. But now we are facing some uncertainty. So there is uncertainty on the measures in place to ensure that funds flow in as well as a degree of autonomy the body can exert. So actually here we are talking about funding. Not only funding is the issue but even autonomy is also the issue. So here if you see this article says that so here we are expecting that we are going to get the funds from the private sector like private company or private sector entities they are going to contribute. So how they are going to contribute under this CSR corporate social responsibility. So what is this corporate social responsibility? Whenever any private sector companies are there or any institutions so whenever they are getting the profit so out of that profit at least two percentage they have to spend on this corporate social responsibility that means they can spend on sanitation purpose they can spend on education health hospitals etc okay so whenever they are reaching a certain amount of target so after that two percentage of their profit they have to spend as corporate social responsibility and under this corporate social responsibility the government will be also accepting the funds for this national research foundation so recently this national research foundation bill 2023 approved by union cabinet and the then this bill it is going to be tabled in the monsoon session soon so the important objective of establishing of this national research foundation is to boost private sector contribution so we have to attract this private investments in this research in india and here in this way we can uh, get more funds for the state universities and as well state related colleges as well so in this context here statistics from uh, 
the statistics from this ministry of science and technology also suggest that only 36 percentage of india's research expenditure that is about 1.2 lakh crore that is coming from the private sector it is very very low so here if you're talking about the spending of government indian government in this research and development it is just 0.6 percentage of the gdp but if you're talking about other countries they are investing like one to two percentage but the global average here is 1.8 percentage so if you're comparing with this global average so india spending it is very minute so in this context so what we have to do we have to increase our spending in this research and development so we're talking about some facts regarding this national research foundation so it is a proposed entity and this entity will replace science and engineering research board of india that is serb and it will catalyze this a channel interdisciplinary research for accelerating india's ambitious development agenda so we are going to focus on india's development agenda and we are going to increase our expenditure and we are going to focus on research and development and here we have to go for uh, creation of knowledge and translation and here we have to improve our spending in research so what are the goals the goals here is we have to focus on the development challenges so we should not depend upon the other countries for this uh, development projects we have to focus on our research and development such that we can go for improving of our technology and we have to minimize the duplication of research efforts and we have to promote the research into policy and as well as practice and if you're talking about some features of this national research foundation so it will be presided by our prime minister and this national research foundation will be consisting of 10 major dictorates and they will be focusing on the different fields like science arts humanities innovation entrepreneurship etc and this national research foundation will have about 18 member board with eminent indian and international scientists and will be also including the senior government functionaries and as well as industry leaders and this nrf will be registered as a society and which will be having an independent secretariat as well so if we're talking about expectations so what we can expect from this national research foundation so here we are going to increase our spending in research and development from 0 0.627 percentage uh, to 2 percentage of gdp and the target year is by 2030 and we can enhance india's share of global scientific publications and we can create a pool of talented researchers across the different disciplines and as well as different sectors and we can also develop some innovative solutions for india's development challenges and we can also translate scientific knowledge into social and economic benefits so this is about the expectations that we can get from this national research foundation so these are the some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper and i want to say one thing so in rather science we started this mains answer writing program and this is daily answer writing program for one year so in this course we are going to provide you the detailed syllabus and detailed schedule for the next 52 weeks and based on that uh, syllabus or based on that uh, timetable so we are going to give you daily one question and along with that question we are also going to give you the model answer as well so that you can write the answer and you can send your answer to us so that there will be detailed evaluation of your answer and there will be doubt clearing session on every sunday and there will be one to one mentorship as well so this course is excellent and this will be very useful to improve your answer writing and this answer writing is very important and crucial to clear your means so if you will want to join this means answer writing program so you can contact me directly on this number 8074765513 okay and if you have any query you can resolve your queries and if you want to enroll you can call to this number or you can also text me or ping me on this number and if you want to directly join and you can visit the website Rathor Science Academy there you can see this course and you can enroll directly in the website itself okay so this course is absolutely very useful so try to join this course and if you can't pay the fee in the one go so you, there is also the installment facility okay so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf 
This is our today's Hindu newspaper. So date here is July 14th and today is Friday. So the first article is about India-France relations. So title is India-France ties scared for next 25 years. And with PM flying to Paris, India approves plan to buy 26 Rafale jets. So here you have to know some facts regarding this Rafale as well. And next topic it is about River Yamuna makes further ingress Delhi facing crisis. So this article is very important because you have to know some facts regarding this River Yamuna. So whenever any river is in use, there is a high chance of getting question regarding that river in your main, in your presence. Like uh, where it is originated, which are the left bank tributaries, right bank tributaries. And if there are any dams which are present across that uh, river or not. So where it is joining with the another river. So like that you can get the questions. So please be prepared with that. And if you move forward here, you can see man-made factors at play in city going underwater says export experts so actually what happened whenever you are getting this monsoon season or rainy season so one problem that you can see here is inundation of cities okay that is heavy uh, overflow of water on the roads in the cities so what might be the reason so if you are a municipal commissioner that means your future bureaucrat lights uh, right uh, right so if you are a municipal commissioner so what are the steps that you are going to take before the rainy season comes and if there is any crisis so what are the steps that you are going to take so that thing that you have to know and this topic is important from your ethics point of view and you can get uh, a case study as well so if you see this page number four you can see ucc if implemented hastily will leads to constitutional breakdown say Tamil Nadu government so here you have to know about this uniform civil code and i already discussed this topic in the previous lectures and next one is five Kanwariyas killed in Delhi. So here you have to know about who is this Kanwariyas. So in this uh, page, okay, so I will be showing you that page first. So in this spotlight, you can see these are the people who are carrying like uh, vessels to drink some water. So these were the Kanwariyas. So these people, they are uh, Shiv Bhakts, okay. And they will be walking for the hundreds of kilometers carrying pots of Ganga water. And this editorial page I discussed about this article regarding Allahabad High Court judgment regarding the personal uh, personal decisions, okay, personal choices. And next I discussed about this 50th GST council meet. And in this opinion page, uh, this is the image that I found interesting. It is about River Bias. And the text and context are discussed about this GSI survey of Siachen Glacier. So here you can see this uh, images of Siachen Glacier. So here you can see Glacier Trench. And here you can see uh, our lakes which are formed because of melting of glacier. And here you can see patrolling point 1, patrolling point 2. If you move on to this news page, you can see central list new bill to replace Delhi ordinance in house. So if you have time, you can go to that article. And next one is Ukraine war not a priority of G20 presidency says India. So as you all know that India is enjoying the presidency of G20 now. India says that Ukraine war it is not at all a priority now. So in this page number 16, you can see the articles regarding today's launch of uh, uh, Chandrayaan 3 so we are going to have this launch at 2 35 p.m. and we have to see whether it will be a success or not so entire India is waiting for this and next article is about the proposed National Research Foundation looks to top CSR I discussed this topic and in the world page you can see F-16 jets in Ukraine will be seen as a nuclear threat says Russia so here you have to see which country manufacture this F-16 jets and next topic is stop US Chinese diplomats meets at Asian talks. So this article is also important and here you have to see which are the members of this Asian. So as I said there are 10 members. So please let me know which are those members of, of this Asian. And in this business page, page number 18, there is one article that is India's January June trade with China declines. So yes, India which is having the trade with China and with China. India has always trade deficit and China enjoys trade surplus 
and actually the trade with china has been fell between june between january to june and if you see the two way trade it is around the dollar 66.02 billion and the trade deficit uh, which is which is seen with india it is about dollar 67.04 billion okay and these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so if you really enjoy this lecture so hit the like button and here in the science page you can see india's diabetes epidemic is making its widespread tb problem worse so because of this diabetes mellitus it is also one important risk factor for the increasing of severity of this tuberculosis so here you have to know about what is this diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is nothing but increasing of sugar levels that is blood sugar levels that is sugar levels or glucose level in the blood it is because of decreasing of hormone called as insulin so insulin is secreted by pancreas okay and this tuberculosis it is a disease which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis that is a bacteria so it will be affecting not only the lungs but even the other organs of our body okay so this is about this topic and if you really like this video hit the like button and if you are watching this uh, rathor science academy for the first time please subscribe to our channel so we are going to come up with a different videos on current affairs in the future as well so by this i'm concluding and don't forget to share this video in the telegram groups or in uh, or any whatsapp group and or any of your friends so by this i'm concluding thank you so much